back in. Go to there. Welcome to the video guys, as I covered the other day, the BBC has been under the cosh not only by the defund the BBC campaign, but as we all know, just by the people of this country who are against their biased coverage of almost everything that goes against what we want. Well, it didn't stop there because furious Tory MPs come out and attack the BBC over taking the free licence away from 75 year olds and following on from that, Newswatch also reported them to Ofcom for their biased behaviour, which we'll take a look at in a moment, but we'll take a look at this Express article, which goes into detail about the Tory MPs attacking the BBC, and as it says here, demanding Lineker's salaries cut before over 75s lose their free licence. Now, before we get into that, remember, the daily live streams have moved over to Twitch, so if you want to join me over there to chat in real time, the link will be down in the video description as always, along with the channel's other social media links. But back to the Bolshevik Broadcasting Corporation, and the Tory MPs attacking it, along with, of course, Newswatch reporting them to Ofcom, like I said. The BBC's decision to strip most over 75s of free television licences demonstrates how detached the corporation has become from viewers more than 60 Conservative MPs have warned in a scathing letter. They instead suggested the BBC economise in other areas, for example, the salaries of top earners such as Gary Lineker and Chris Evans. The broadcaster had put plans to begin means testing on ice during the coronavirus pandemic, but earlier this month confirmed the new scheme would be introduced on August 1st, triggering a barrage of criticism from among others Good Morning Britain host Piers Karen Morgan, who has got no right to speak on anything, the hypocritical fuckpig, let's be honest. He has shown himself to be an utter arsewipe over the past couple of months for a variety of different reasons, ranging from coronavirus to constant virtue signalling. Now, 66 Tories, including former leader Ian Duncan Smith and Marc Francois, chairman of the Eurosceptic European Research Group have written to BBC Director General Lord Hall of Birkenhead, setting out their concerns. The letter, organised by the Blue Collar Conservatism Group, which includes MPs representing former Labour stronghold states, when millions of elderly Brits have been asked to stay at home during the global coronavirus crisis, the timing of this announcement could not have been worse. Frankly, it is a kick in the teeth for millions of over 75 year olds who have had a torrid time in lockdown, which I would 100% have to agree with and are still expected to try and lock down because obviously they are most at risk from what is going on at the moment. Pointing to the BBC's annual income of 5 billion, the signatories ask why the new measures were necessary, which is something everyone is asking, I think you would agree. They added, we question the need for the BBC to allocate the enormous sum of 100 million on diversity, which with strong management could be achieved for minimal cost. And as Carl from the Accard Daily Channel pointed out recently, the BBC's diversity quota is massive. They already have over the percentages you see across the country when it comes to ethnic and minority groups. Much like the NHS, with their diversity managers costing 60k a year or whatever it is, the BBC is doing this to virtue signal and appear as woke as possible. In reference to the BBC's top stars, with Match of the Day host Lineker earning one 1.75 million a year and Chris Evans earning 1.25 million a year, the letter adds, reducing the excessive salaries of your highest paid stars and executives would provide ample financial respite, which I'm sure would be true, but as you will see in a moment, the BBC don't really entertain that, they ignore it and just go on about the highest paid stars not being able to cover the money as you will see. It continues, the fact you have prioritised pensioners to take the brunt of your cost saving shows how detached you have become from from your viewers. Now is not the time to scrap free TV licences for over 75s. The letter, which is also signed by former Work and Pensions Minister and MP for Tatton Esther McVeigh and Harlow MP Robert Halfen, Chairman of the Commons Education Committee, highlights the bitter dispute between the government and the BBC, with Downing Street having described the new policy as the wrong decision that is an understatement, let me tell you. The government is also considering whether to decriminalise non-payment of the fee currently set at £157.50 for a colour licence and £57 for a black and white one. 
A spokesman said it was the government who decided to stop funding free TV licenses for the over 75s. No, at the end of the day, you agreed to a deal where you could raise the TV license cost when you wanted if you agreed to continue paying for the free TV license for over 75 year olds. So don't give me that bullshit. I've covered this in a previous video, you sniveling shit weasel. The decision to start the new scheme in August has not been easy, but we could not continue delaying without profoundly impacting the programs and services all audiences love, yeah, the 20 or 30 people that actually watch them. Continuing with the government scheme would have meant the closure of BBC Two, BBC Four, the BBC News Channel, the BBC Scotland Channel, Radio 5 Live and 5 Live Sports Extra, along with a number of local radio stations, which I have to call utter bullshit on, but we'll get into that in a minute when they go into a bit more detail. Around 1.5 million households could get free TV licenses if someone is over 75 and receives pension credit and 450,000 of them have already applied and critically it is not the BBC making the judgement about poverty, it is the government who sets and controls that measure. Yeah but it wouldn't relate to these over 75 year olds if you had stuck to the deal that you had agreed which allows you to keep raising the licence fee as I said. Addressing the question of its highest paid talent, the spokesman added, we have said many times that if the BBC employed no presenters paid over 150k that would only save 10 million, which is no way near the £745 million pound and rising needed to fund free licences for all over 75 year olds. Yep, but you're conveniently missing out, as I said, the fact that they included executives in the amounts they were talking where you have just gone straight to presenters. Because we all know the executives of the BBC are extremely well paid at the end of the day and could well make up a hell of a lot more money allowing the BBC to do this, though they don't even have any right to do it at the end of the day. As I've said many times in this video and many times before, for the BBC agreed to a deal where they could raise the license fee and they had to keep the free license for over 75 year olds. That is the end of it. There is no way around it. They are just trying to talk a load of bullshit in this article, which they will continue now with this nonsense you are about to hear. Our £100 million diversity pledge is not new money, it is a prioritisation from our existing budget for new programmes, so this is about a choice on how we spend our money. Which, yeah, you are making the choice to spend it on this diversity pledge that you don't need because you've over diversified as it is, when you could be giving this money towards allowing over 75 year olds to have a free TV licence, making you of course a bunch of snivelling shit weasels. Having more people from diverse backgrounds to truly reflect the public, including those from minorities or with disabilities or disadvantaged backgrounds is a good thing the BBC wants to achieve and like I've said you've already passed that the Akkad Daily Channel pointed it out with the figures the other day. Now like I said it didn't end there because as we can see in this Express article also the biased BBC is systematically pro-EU and has failed Britain Ofcom has been told. The BBC has been accused of systemic failure to comply with its charter obligations to impartiality over 20 years in a major major complaint lodged with Ofcom. Broadcasting Monitoring Group Newswatch has prepared the complaint in a week where BBC's Director of Editorial Policy David Jordan admitted journalists has overstepped the mark on Twitter because they're a toxic bunch of scumbags as we all know. He told the House of Lords Digital and Communications Committee that this meant we have had issues, for example, about tracking the rise of Euro scepticism across the BBC. Did we do that adequately? No, we didn't. Former BBC News producer David Keeley, who now heads up Newswatch, has made a series of historic complaints over the BBC's bias in favour of pro-EU voices, which is something we have all complained about many times. The submission has been accompanied with past studies which showed that since 1999, pro-EU voices have consistently had more prominence than Eurosceptic ones. I mean, you don't even need to go back that far, you can just look at the past four years, or even the past 12 months for that matter. Last year was peak Ramona on the BBC, question time news night, we see it every day. Anger over the issue has boosted calls among Conservative MPs for the BBC licence to be decriminalised and has recently led to the emergence of the defund the BBC campaign as I mentioned at the start of this video relating to what I covered the other day. 
The submission has claimed that the BBC's bias comes through, considerable bias by omission with central issues ignored or underreported, and EU news afforded low priority and downplayed, along with systematic and long-term underrepresentation of anti-EU and Eurosceptic guests voicing their opinions, which, like I've already said in this video, we have been calling out for months and months at this point. It claims that the case for withdrawal from the EU was heavily ignored or presented very narrowly, often through the prism of division within the Conservative Party or through focusing primarily on perceived problems within the withdrawal camp or Project Fear as we dealt with over the past few years. The argument for leaving the EU when linked to immigration issues has been routinely projected as xenophobic, racist and extreme, which obviously is nonsense at the end of the day. The it's argument for leaving the EU when linked to immigration issues has been routinely projected as xenophobic, racist and extreme, which is obviously laughable when you consider the colour of most European nations, but we've been over that before, there's no point in going on about it again. It went on, the BBC's so-called reality check unit was not impartial on this issue and in many ways became a vehicle for expressing Remain or anti-withdrawal opinion, which is what the BBC in its entirety had become. The core of the complaint, supported by recent case law, is that the BBC has wrongly interpreted its obligation of ensuring due impartiality and as a result has breached its long-standing charter obligation which goes back to at least the Television Act of 1954. Rather, the BBC is obliged to proceed by identifying the main strands of opinion within the public discord and give each a fair opportunity to be heard so as to provide a level playing field for competing views and opinions so that those views and opinions are expressed, heard, answered and debated, which obviously the BBC do not do. They are more interested in cancelling anyone they disagree with and calling them far-right thugs, as we already know. Newswatch said that its research included between 1999 and 2015 it tracked more than 6,000 hours of BBC programming and analysed its coverage of the European Union news and current affairs. This generated thousands of pages of programme logs and more than 8,000 full transcripts of EU-related items running into 4 million words. It continued its work with new technologies after 2016, which will be interesting to see whether they stepped it up after the Brexit campaign was won by the Leave vote in a historic victory. Now, summing up this video, I would have to say it's really not looking good. Boris Johnson needs to start taking the ball by the horns and drag the BBC down into the shitter where it belongs. Decriminalising the licence will likely go a long way to bringing that about, which will have me celebrating like Brexit, let me tell you. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies Mr. Verhofstadt against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>